Recently, the Mercometer sidechain had launched and I have the co-founder and CTO of DC Spark, Sebastian Gilmore, join me on this episode to talk all about Mercometer launch, what it means and what its future is going to look like as a sidechain for scaling, rollups and a whole bunch of other things for the Cardano ecosystem. So I'm pretty excited to learn more of the technical aspects of how it's going to improve the Cardano blockchain and how it's going to be utilized in the future, maybe six months to a year down the track. So it's a really interesting conversation around that. He also talks about a couple of catalyst proposals that the team have put in place to build out some cool new unique tools for the Cardano ecosystem as well. All right, let's get into this interview. Yeah, yeah, gotta do it like that. You've been listening to the Learn Cardano podcast. Gotta get Sebastian, welcome to the podcast. Yeah, thank you for having me. Oh, it's great to be here. So the Mecometer sidechain has rolled out for Cardano, which is very exciting. We're seeing a lot of utility on there. We're seeing a lot of DEXs and other dApps roll out on it. How has the process been over the last uh, 15 days or so? And how how many like uh, dApps are you seeing coming on board to the sidechain at the moment? Mecometer's launch has been a great success, in my opinion. We've reached a TVL of, of over 100 million since launch. So clearly there's been a lot of interest from people of which there's been a lot of ADA that has been moved onto Milkomera as Milk ADA. And people are using DEXs on Milkomera and, and trying to, you know, actually do trading on there and, and um, deploying projects. So people are clearly with the amount of money involved. They're not just, you know, putting in a small amount of money to test it out. There's clearly people who are, you know, actually making substantial trades and substantial you know, financial activity on Milcom, which is really exciting. Obviously launching a pro large project like Milcom not cannot be done in a single step. So we launched the uh, wrapping and unwrapping of ADA onto the Milcom site chain, which basically allows you to take your ADA and use it to call ERC-20, um, for example, smart contracts, Anything that's fleet supports and that EVM supports can be used on Milk Camera. And you can do all that with your ADA. So you take your ADA, you wrap it to Milk ADA. And then with this Milk ADA, you can now use this to access ERC20 tokens. You can access, use this to access you know, Ethereum style DEXs and so on. And so this has a lot, unlocked a lot of utility for people and also unlocked a lot of um, developer opportunities. So, for example, people have um, you know, started working on smart contracts for solidity that can then be deployed to the Cardano ecosystem, right? So more developers can now get involved in Cardano. Cardano uses something called the UTXO model, which is very different from Ethereum. And so it has its use cases, but also it has this demerits. No system is, is perfect. And so it allows developers to think about, you know, for my application, which system best fits, you know, what I want to achieve. And Milk Gamera gives them the choice. You can now choose, do you want the Cardano model, which has all these advantages, but also all these things you have to think of, or do you want the Ethereum model, which also has its advantage, but also has its disadvantages. Um, so the flexibility has been great. One of the main use cases actually so far has been to bridge assets over from Ethereum. So for example, people want to bridge over wrapped Ethereum, people want to bring over wrapped BTC, they want to bring over stable coins like USDT, USDC. And Nilkomana has enabled them to bring their assets from Ethereum to Milcomera. And also we announced today that um, thanks to our, our partners at Wing Writers and Nomad, you can now also bridge these assets from uh, Milcomera to Cardano. So it means that from Cardano, you can now have stable coins like USDC, which is you know not only unlocking a huge amount of use cases on Milcomera itself, um, but also unlocking a lot of DeFi use cases on Cardano main chain. That is absolutely exciting. It, I, I did see that blog post come out from the Wing Riders team, like talking about that and uh, being able to actually see wrapped uh, BTC or wrapped ETH or wrapped USDC over on the Cardano blockchain is really exciting because we're waiting for these other assets, these stable coins to actually come over so people can trade or provide liquidity against them. So it's it's really exciting to see the uh, the, the functionality that Milcometer has provided for the Cardano ecosystem, having those bridges come back and forth. Uh, when, when will we actually see this uh, come through? Yes, yeah, so the Wing Riders launch is, will come with these tokens. Notably, it will come with USDC and USDT. 
And then we're going to get Rap Bitcoin and Rap Ethereum also available shortly. I, I'm not sure if it will part of the initial release or maybe a few days afterwards, but, you know, fairly close. So check out Wing Riders on Twitter for their kind of announcements of their release, which should be done fairly shortly. So maybe by the time this interview is, is uploaded, uh, that will already have happened. So that's that's a really cool and exciting development that's happening on Milkometer. Is it, what, what else is coming up and what else is on your roadmap that's, uh, that we can look forward to and what else are you bringing to the Cardano ecosystem? Yeah, so everything has to be done in steps, as I said. So the first step for Milkometer is being able to take your ADA, wrap it as milk ADA and unwrap it. So then you can now take your ADA and, and use ERC-20, uh, for example, on Milkometer, use other Ethereum smart contracts on Milkometer. But we want people to be able to bridge any asset they want, right? So if you have some Cardano token that you created and you would like people to, you know, trade them on Ethereum style DEXs, right? We would like to be able to provide that functionality so people could, you know, take their asset and trade it on, on Milky Swap, which is a DEX that runs on Milkomera and should be able to do that. Uh, there is a caveat that we can't make it perfectly open. And the reason for that is because Milkamra is a sidechain. And so there needs to be validators that run this, this kind of token conversion process. And the more tokens you have, the more computational power it uses. So if we said, oh, it's open to any token, then somebody could just you know spam the system, which kind of increase validator resource requirements. So there will be like a kind of um, application process. And we're working with writers for the UX for that. So the first release, which was um, today, at the time of this interview, will just be the, these tokens, along with Blues is another one that's also going to be available day one uh, from BlueShift. Um, but in the coming um, days and, and hopefully not weeks, but you know, in this kind of time range, we'll kind of also open it up for other people to apply for the token to bring it over. And this applies not just for Cardano native tokens that want to come over to Milkamra, but also the other way around. So if you know, projects that release their token on Milkamna will be able to bring their token over to Cardano Texas as well. So this is one of the um, features that's in on our short-term horizon. Now for medium term and long term, we have a lot of ideas and a lot of these are captured in catalyst proposals. So for fund eight, we have a, a quite a, a list of catalyst proposals, which which kind of lay out our vision of you know, what the Bitcoin ecosystem needs next and, and what we think has value. So before we get into Cal's proposals, let me kind of just set the stage so people understand. So I want to make, you know, super transparent. Um, Milkomera was built in part by Catalyst Funding. I think so far we've received 300K in Catalyst Funding for Milkomera really work, maybe a bit lower, 200K. Um, so it, it is built in part with Catalyst Funding and that has helped. It is not built entirely with Catalyst Funding. Right. So Catalyst, at the time we started Milkomet, it was not big enough to support a project such as Catalyst. And so we did seek external funding, you know, on top of the Catalyst proposal, um, but we do not have a token. Right? So these are not, you know, uh, ICOs or something like that. Uh, we did, you know, seek funding. And I just want to make that absolutely clear because um, I know people are concerned, always concerned about, you know, how, where the money come from for these being built. And of course, you know, I want to, in this podcast, emphasize that we receive money from Catalyst and we have more proposals to make more common great. Um, but I also want to be transparent that um, this was not a 100% publicly funded project. Yeah, that we, you always see that um, the on your Twitter profile for Milkometer, there is no token. And um, yes. I believe in uh, at the previous interview that um, I had with Nico, uh, he talked about uh, some of the, the funding aspects. So if anyone wants to find out more about that, they can watch the interview there as well. Now, you mentioned some of these uh, Catalyst proposals, and one of them caught my attention. And uh, I, I did a read up about future scaling on Cardano as well. And it talked about uh, rollups and ZK rollups. So before we talk about the Catalyst proposal and what you need for that, can you explain what rollups and ZK rollups are and how can they help the Cardano ecosystem? Yeah, so let me kind of just introduce to you how Milkana works right now. And I think this will make it easy for you people who are listening to kind of uh, compare to where we want to go. So right now, Milkomera is a side chain. What does that mean? It means that Milkomera operates separately from Cardano. You can imagine there's Cardano on one side and Milkomera on the other. 
Now, these projects are linked because Milcomra uses ADA as the base asset, right? So there's no new token you have to purchase. You're going from ADA to ADA, right? So these projects are, you know, strongly linked from the currency aspect. And they're also um, softly linked from the validator set. So the block pr producers on Cardano are see all the Cardano stake pools, but Milcomra has its own block producers, right? And a lot of these block producers are SPOs. Right, so they they're creating blocks on, on both chains, but not everybody. The to become a Milkman validator for Cardano, the only requirement was that you had to prove that you were incentivized for the success of Cardano. And so for some people, that was oh, I run a, a, a stake pool on Cardano, and so I'm incentivized for the success of the protocol. But for other people, this was oh, I run a business that creates projects on Cardano, and and therefore my company is you know incentivized for the success of Cardano. So this, the, the block producers also have some, um, you know, soft connection, but it's not a hard connection, right? Which means that when you're using Milkomoda to be fully transparent, it means that you need to trust the set of validators on Milkomoda, right? And so we want people to be able to trust the validators, which is why we, you know, pick people that are incentivized for the success of Cardano. And our goal is to get the 32 validators. So we have, you know, nice you know, large set of independent validators. And these are not unknown people. These are people you know from Cardano stake pools that you're delegating to companies that are building on Cardano that you know, right? So it's not just like Ram Joshimo that's running five accounts, right? So that's our, our goal for now, but it, it still does mean that users have to know this validator set and, and trust this validator set if they want to assess the security of Milkomoda. Uh, so I'll say for a lot of users, this is a fine. They know these companies and they're willing to trust with what, what they provide. Uh, what would be really great is if we could get the security of Milkomra to be the same security as Cardano. So that when you, you use Milkomra, you don't have to, oh, who are the validators set? Do I, how do I trust these people? It'd be great if we could say, if you trust Cardano, you can automatically trust Milkomra, right? That's kind of the ultimate security yeah. guarantee. You yeah. see the security of your chain is, is the same as Cardano. And there's actually a way to do that. And that's the technology called rollups. So the rollup concept is that you have something like a sidechain, but all these states that happens on the sidechain, you upload it to the main chain. Okay. So if you want to figure out what is the state of Milkomera, you just need to download the Cardano blockchain and they'll automatically get you the full history of Milkomera. And then as long as you're trusting the Cardano block producers, then all the data on Cardano is correct. And therefore your um, subset of the Cardano blocks that contain milk information uh, must also be the correct milk information. So just by trusting Cardano, you now automatically know the milk uh, chain state and there, therefore kind of inherits the security property. Now, this is where we want to go, right? With this kind of rollup technology. Uh, but why have we not done it for version one is, is one of the top questions we get. And um, there's there's two main reasons. And I think they're probably uh, easy enough to understand for your, for your viewers to suddenly kind of get to it. So uh, reason number one is uh, this kind of concept of taking the data and adding it to the Cardano mainnet is called data availability. So if you see people on Twitter, on YouTube talk about data availability, which is a hot topic right now, is how to make the data available to everybody, right? Um, so like, for example, in the pro problems with NFTs is that how do you know the data of the NFT will actually stay online, right? If the NFT pictures are hosted on some website, the website may go down and then you lose your NFT, right? Um, so you want the data to always be available so that no matter when this happens, a year from now, five years from now, 10 years from now, the data is always available, right? Um, so data availability is super important for the state of Milkomra, right? Because we want the user to, uh, you know, if they download Cardano now, download Cardano five years in the future, download Cardano 10 years in the future, they'll be able to see the full state of Milkomra and compute what's the latest state. Because that's what we need to be able to, you know, have the security guarantees we want. So how do we make that data available? Uh, you know, the way people historically do it is they take the chain state, the Milkomra state, compress it and upload like a compressed, you know, data version to Cardano as, as blocks happen, as state changes. 
but Cardano was actually optimized for data unavailability, right? So Cardano is like a rare chain in that most um, blockchains out there optimize to make data available to dApps, data, um, data available in between the chain, but Cardano is actually optimized for data inavailability. Um, so that's why if you've ever seen uh, websites that say like, you know, which smart contracts have been used on Cardano, is this address a smart contract? Oftentimes they'll say like, I don't know, right? Because in, in Cardano, the data is not available until it's needed, right. right? So if you look at an address, you don't know who owns the address. You don't know if it's a Pluto smart contract until it actually becomes used in the future. So it's hard to know like how many smart contracts on there on Cardano because until this is actually used by somebody, you don't know. And the reason Cardano was designed this way is because it shrinks the Cardano blockchain significantly compared to other projects like Ethereum, right? So it allows Cardano to have a, a, a fast and efficient blocking to sync and we avoid this kind of state growth that makes Ethereum so hard to synchronize. Uh, but this advantage is also, you know, double-edged sword. It also makes it hard for projects like Rollups to provide good data availability to uh, keep its, its state secure. So the Cardano developers are aware of, of this, you know, design implication, and they're going to make some changes in the upcoming Vassal hard fork to make it easier to make data available through the Cardano blockchain. So they're adding a new concept called inline datums, um, which I'm not going to go over because it's a bit too complicated. And they're also um, adding a read-only um, uh, data input is the name of the feature. Um, so these, these are two features that are coming in the Vassal hard fork that will make it easier to for dApps to make data available and make it easier for dApps to verify the data on chain, right? But until we have that, it's hard to make a, a rollup because we'd have to try and, and stuff the data on Cardano in weird ways, and they wouldn't be a verifiable from Pluto smart contracts. So then it's, it's not super useful. Um, so this is one of the main reasons we wanted to say, okay, well, we can't do that now. Um, but I think Milkamana has a lot of use cases that it allows. And so it makes sense to launch Milkamana as soon as possible, grow that ecosystem as soon as possible, get as many dApps to put on Cardano as soon as possible. And then once the technology is available, then we can make the switch. So this Very is reason cool. number one. And, and reason number two is just uh, performance of Cardano. So right now Cardano mainnet um, usually runs at, you know, about one to two transactions per second. It's usually what we're looking at. And um, this is fine for a lot of the current use cases, but if the state of your um, chain depends on being able to reliably upload data to the Cardano blockchain, and sometimes the Cardano blockchain takes like an hour to upload data, um, this turns you know Cardano congestion into congestion of your chain as well. And so this kind of performance um, bottleneck was also a concern because if, if we can't upload or stay correctly, then all of Milkona starts you know, slowing down and this uh, hurts the user experience a lot. And so Cardano has a lot of scalability solutions that are planned to be rolled out um, this year. And that will make, also make it easier for us to deploy this and not have to be as concerned about uh, performance bottlenecks. Well, the uh, Vassal hard fork, the performance and scalability uh, features that are being rolled out in it be enough for Milkometer to upload the states to it? So the Plutus release functionality in Vassal should be. The performance um, will not come as part of Vassal. The performance improvements will come as separate upgrades later this year. And so we'll have to wait on some of these, for example, input and door serves, pipelining, these are changes that Iris has announced for scalability uh, improvements, but they're not part of the Vassal hard fork, but separate deployments later in this year. So with Vassal, we have the technology-wise approach. We have the path to get Mill coming as a site, uh, as a layer two. Um, but until these other improvements come in, um, we'll still have this uh, scalability bottleneck. Right, gotcha. So we still have a little while to wait before... Uh, we see the full roll-ups, uh, roll-out on, uh, on Cardano. Okay, cool. Yeah, uh, but we, we are actively working on this. And so one of the interesting, interesting things about Milkamata is that we can use the same technology to deploy 
on other chains that also don't support EVM. So for example, um, Algorand is one, Solana is another. These are large blockchains that have very different philosophies from Cardano, but also don't support the EVM natively. And so what we can do is take Milkamra and deploy on these other chains and bridge them together so that, um, you know, if you have a project on Solana, you can easily, you know, bring your tokens over to Cardano or vice versa. If you have a project on Algorand, you can also bring your tokens, you know, back and forth. And so um, Solana it is a bit hard for layer twos as well, because also their design philosophy was not so conductive to layer twos. Um, and Algorand is also making, making some changes to make L2s easier. Um, so we're kind of looking at these other projects as well and figure out, you know, how can we come up with a layer two architecture that will work with, you know, Cardano's plan and Algorand's plan and Solana's plans and try and connect things together because the, the real benefit of Milkama, like I, I mentioned earlier in this video, is, is giving developers choices, right? Empowering the developers. Yeah. Um, if you have some project that lives in some other chain you want to port over to Cardano, you have that power. If you have some project that would run better and some different execution model, you have that power to choose that and still get access to the Cardano community and the Cardano chain and all the benefits that come from that. I love the possibility of bridging over all these different assets from different chains. Is is that the the vision there? So like we could see um, Milkometa being a bridge over from our grant from uh, Solana and then bridging uh, Ethereum and uh, um, Cardano and have that one um, side chain for all of those different ecosystems. Is that the type of vision that you guys are aiming for? Yeah, I think it's it's pretty clear to people at this point that we're not going towards one blockchain to roll them all, but we're going towards a multi-chain future. Every project has um, you know, lowered an amount of total uh, market cap, right? The, the total blockchain market cap has gone more and more split across a large variety of projects. And we don't see that trend reversing anytime soon, if ever. Yeah. And so it's, it's clear that we need to start, you know, building bridges to other other chains and, and you know, create some uh, unified ecosystem. And it's always been a something the Cardano ecosystem has been very well aware of. If you look at the original Cardano roadmap, one of the key pillars of Cardano is interoperability. How can we get Cardano to be interoperable with other protocols? And Charles has a great video called, I believe, the uh, pond, lake, and ocean, something like that. I, I, it's been a, quite a long time, so I don't remember the exact title. If you if you look that up, you'll find a, a video by Charles Hoskinson, CEO of IOG, who will explain you know his vision of, of how we can build you know eco a great ecosystem in Cardano, but how we also have to connect to these other ecosystems. And we think Milkamra will be able to provide you know this kind of bridging to other ecosystems. And we're also you know working on a wallet called Flint Wallet that is also meant to unify all these ecosystems into a single wallet. So you could create your Cardano wallet and from um, Flint, you'll be able to connect to Milcom C1, which is Cardano deployment. And then you'll also be able to connect to the Solana deployment, you'll be able to connect to the Algorand deployment and handle it all from you know, a single place. And so that's kind of the vision. Crazy, that's that's uh, one, one absolutely amazing vision and you know from, from a, a user point of view it, it sounds all quite technical and you know connecting all these bits and pieces together but I guess at the end of it all someone developing a game that wants to have that complete interoperability would be able to provide that so I'll be able to log into some sort of game fire thing and uh, connect my wallet from wherever it is and be able to pull in all my assets from all these different chains and uh, play the game of what, whatever it might be, like NFTs. And that's that's a really cool vision. And uh, I really hope that uh, happens uh, pretty soon. Yeah, I think it, it'll totally revolutionize the way people think of blockchain. So right now, people are very much focused on, you know, is this DAP a Cardano DAP? Is this DAP yeah. a Solana DAP? Is this DAP a, a, another DAP? And then people, the communities fight over this. Like, oh, you're a Ethereum DAP, so I, I can't like you. But in the future, I feel... You know, you'll just be using these dApps and it'll be connected to a bunch of different chains and you'll be able to move your assets over and we're going towards a you know, much more open future. It's so like at the end of it all, someone just wants to participate in DeFi. Uh, they don't care what chain it is as long as they're participating and it's making you money. And it's, that's, that's, yeah. all, that's all they really care for uh, at the end of it all. So that's, that's a really cool feature to have. Uh, future to have. 
So in terms of the Catalyst proposals that we're talking about, one of them is for ZK rollups and the development of that feature within Milcometer. Can you talk about the proposal and what you're asking for and what you're planning to deliver for that particular proposal? Yeah, so related to moving Milcometer from a site chain to uh, a rollup, we actually have two rollups related proposals. One that was passed in the previous funding round which was for the R&D of how to design a rollup solution for Cardano, right? How do, how do we concretely get you know, coming up from a sidechain to a, a rollup on Cardano? The rollup proposal we're making uh, for this funding round is actually building on top of that. So something called layer threes. So you've heard of layer ones, like Cardano, like Bitcoin, these are layer one protocols. You've, you may have heard of layer twos, for example, and they'll come trying to become a layer two, a rollup like we talked about previously. There's other ones like Arbitrum, um, Optimism. These are, you know, Ethereum layer twos. Um, but there's actually a, a thing now called layer threes, which is, you know, rollups for rollups, <laughs> right? And you can, you can kind of chain these. And one of the reasons people do rollups for rollups is historically for kind of performance reasons, right? If you have a rollup and then that rollup gets congested, well, then you can deploy another layer on top of that. Um, but there's actually another interesting idea for layer threes, which is compatibility, right? So if you look at Ethereum right now, there's a lot of really interesting rollup solutions, right? So there's a lot of really strong um, ZK rollup solutions, for example, that we don't have on Cardano yet. Right, so you, nothing stops you from building a zk rollup on Cardano. But obviously, it's a lot of work. Um, you know, multi-million dollar projects that last you know a few years to build a, a you know strong prototype. And obviously, Cardano will have these kind of uh, native zero knowledge um, based rollups in the future. But the the key, key idea is, well, what if we can take the you know really interesting research that has been done in the Ethereum side and then deploy these to Cardano? Right, so we look at you know Starkware and see what they've done and, and deploy these projects to Cardano or Polygon what they've done and deploy that to Cardano. Well, why can't we do that? Well, we can't do that because Cardano is not EVM based, and these rollup um, projects need need an EVM based chain to connect to. Right, but what, what Milcoma does allow is a compatibility layer between Cardano and these other rollup solutions. So we can do is we have Cardano and Milcomna is a slim layer two that acts as compatibility layer, gives you the EVM functionality, and then you take a layer two from Ethereum and then connect that to Milcomna. And what this actually effectively does is allow you to take advantage of layer two technology from Ethereum on Cardano. So we're taking you know the whole area of R&D that Ethereum has been working on for all these years and bringing it over to the Cardano ecosystem. Uh, and so I think, Definitely will be as an ecosystem in investing in our own rollup solutions, uh, which I think is super important. And they'll work differently from what Ethereum is doing. Um, but also, I think, you know, taking all this RD that has been done in the Ethereum ecosystem and making that available to Cardano users will also be a powerful idea. You said it's millions and millions of dollars worth of research. So, why not leverage off what someone else has already done and uh, yeah. their research yeah, exactly. and, and use it? That's that's uh, incredible. I didn't realize how much money was being spent on uh, these uh, solutions. That's that's it. Yeah, well, if, if you look at, at companies like Optimism, they've raised hundreds of millions to yeah. work on these projects, and they've been working on these projects for you know quite a few years now. Uh, so a lot of these in include, especially when it comes to zk rollups. It includes, you know, trying to build a, a large team of cryptographers to figure out, you know, how can we advance the field of cryptography to make these rollup solutions more efficient? And, um, you know, this is even just finding the people to build this kind of team just takes a lot of time and money in the current ecosystem uh, because there's so much demand and, and so few people that are kind of experts in this domain. And so being able to, you know, take these other projects and bring them over um, is is I think, you know, something that we should definitely do. And the, the cost from us, our perspective as a Cardinal ecosystem to do this is fairly low because all we have to do is, is provide this kind of compatibility layer and then go to these projects on Ethereum and say, like, hey, look, uh, we've provided this kind of compatibility layer. Here's how you can do this. 
Um, if you hook it up this way, then you can get a layer three solution. And then um, here's kind of our strategy for how we optimize the um, wrap unwrap experience so that it has a you know beautiful UI and doesn't take too long and the user has a smoother experience. So as long as we provide this kind of infrastructure, then we can go to projects um, and, and tell them, hey, if, if you want to bring your technology over and get access to Cardano, which keep in mind, it's one of the largest blockchains out there by community amount. Um, hey, you, you have a great project on Ethereum, you're competing against all these other solutions. If you want you know, to get access to hundreds of thousands of users on the Cardano side um, and you know, broaden your user base, you know, we have a platform for you and you know, the Cardano community would be happy to have you over. And it's kind of the, the, the place we want it to be in my opinion. It's a win-win solution for both chains, really. So one, they yeah. get a huge amount of users, like you said, and then two, we have a, another layer solution for scaling uh, on the Cardano side so we can build different dApps and connect to it as well. So I think that's, that's a really brilliant solution. And you guys aren't really asking too much for this uh, compatibility layer in, um, in the Catalyst funding? Yeah, and, and, and part of that... And it goes back to my background, which is that Catalyst is not at the point where it has enough money to fully fund these kinds of projects. So actually on, on basically all our Catalyst proposals, we actually lose money on making these. Um, but the idea is that, you know, the Cardano ecosystem continues to grow, the amount of money available to Catalyst continues to grow, the amount of uh, ways you can get involved as a company. For example, DCF, which probably a lot of you users don't know, but it's kind of like a larger version of Catalyst is also coming out around the corner. Um, and so when we wanted to do Milkomeda and DC Spark, we said, well, we have two options. We can roll stuff out, you know, slowly like we are now and, and get some Catalyst funding and some external funding kind of combined together, or we could wait until Catalyst grows and DCF grows enough to be able to fully fund these projects through Catalyst. And uh, we thought Cardano needs the solutions now. Right. If if we have a choice between shipping milk on now and shipping milk on in one year, well, clearly it's beneficial for the carding community to ship it now and, and have an entire year to grow the ecosystem. And so if you look at our Cal's proposals, a lot of times you're like, this this is really low for um, you know what we're trying to do. And, and, and that's why it's because you know, if we, we could be asking for more money for the amount of work doing we're doing, but then we'd be pushing other people out. Yeah. of the Cali ecosystem and we didn't want to be pushing people out and you know ask for a low enough money so I, their companies can also you know come in and build out their companies in their own ways yep cool very cool very very cool so one of the other ones that you're asking for um that uh, you're proposing in project catalyst is the milkometer token bridge explorer can you talk a little bit yeah. about that and how that works and and how would users benefit from that yeah so if you look at current layer two solutions and sidechain solutions in, in the ecosystem, one of the biggest UX issues is people want to know um, if I'm if I'm putting ADA onto Milkomera or taking a Milkomera off of, or sorry, ADA off of Milkomera and back to Cardano, how long does that take? Right. And so for Milkomera wrapping tokens right now is is usually a few minutes. And then unwrapping tokens is currently usually a few hours, like two, two to four hours. And we're, we're working to, you know, make that faster. By the end of the day, there's a certain limitation. Like we'll never get it faster than a few minutes. Just techn technologically, that's not possible. And so users want to know, well, in, in between that time, within that five minute, 10 minute period, um, what is happening? And I think everybody here has experienced sending ADA over to an exchange, for example. And then that, that like <laughs> gut feeling like, Where's my Where ADA? It? Like, it actually got arrived. Like, and you, you have like that five yeah. minute period, and you're like, oh, thank God it, it's there. Oh, God. Um, right. Yeah. And yeah. and everybody knows this is a UX problem with, with, with crypto in general that that period where after you send the money, you're not sure it's happening. And that gets even worse for layer twos because the times involved are usually, um, you know, a bit longer. So, this, this uh, bridge explorer is to basically provide information in a user friendly way for that in between period. So that when they send data from Cardano to Milkomna or Milkomna back to Cardano, they have a website they can go to and it says, uh, we've received your wrap request, your unwrap request, you know, two minutes ago, it's been signed off by three of the 32 validators. Um, this will take about five minutes left. Or if there's been an error for whatever reason, we can say like, 
um, your transaction was rejected by these validators for this specific reason, uh, your funds have been returned to Cardano, please try again. Right. And so this is meant to solve, you know, the kind of UX issue of um, wrapping and unwrapping tokens so that users get that, that peace of mind during that, um, you know, in-between period. Yeah, I think that's pretty important. Uh, you, you probably get a lot of support requests around that yes. and, uh, and trying to deal with uh, users, uh, uh, you know, screaming, where's, where's my ADA? So I think that will help, probably help you guys out a lot too. Okay, and there's some other really interesting ones here that I just want to pick out. And th this one here with like a DB Sync replacement in Aura, and then some of these other ones that probably tie into it. Can you talk a little bit about the these ones? Yeah, sure. So let me first introduce this concept of an indexer. So when you're accessing the internet, there's too many websites for you to know like where to find your information. So what you do is you go to Google and you look up, you know, some query and then you get the information, right? So Google works as an indexer. They go through the internet, they create an index that says, if, if you're looking for this kind of thing, you know, go to the, this series of web pages, right? And people are interested in doing the same things for blockchain, right? If you look at the Ethereum blockchain, it's, it's a huge amount of information on there, right? And so you need some sort of quick look up to say like, hey, if I want this information, um, you know, how do I get it all? And this is useful not only for, for humans, but also for DAPs as well, right? So for example, Cardano has multiple DEXs and, and, and NFT marketplaces. If I want to know the price of a token on Cardano, if I want to know the price of it, uh, the floor price of NFT on Cardano, I want some way to quickly go through the Cardano blockchain states and figure out, okay, um, what's the recent trading price of this token, right? So this is usually what indexers do. And indexers make this data available to uh, users, right, through explorers, and also makes it available through dApps, through things like oracles. So uh, indexers are obviously super important to ecosystems. But one thing that often happens is that these indexers are closed source and run by companies. And, you know, whoever pays that company a lot of money, in the Ethereum case, sometimes it's millions of dollars, getting access to this data, unless you're willing to pay millions of dollars no go right. You don't get the data, and this kind of creates like an unfortunate situation where some of these you know companies um, can kind of uh, charge a huge amount of money for this very valuable data. And we don't want the same thing to happen to Cardano, right? We want indexes on Cardano to be open source, freely avail available to anybody, and have a whole ecosystem built around these, so that anybody can create their own indexer. And and if you ever have any data, you can just make mix and match the different indexers you need to uh, get the information you need for your website or for your DAP. And so we have two CALS proposals related to building these indexers. One of them is called DBSync replacement for Aura, which is kind of a, in a way an indexer for transaction history related information, which will be open source and usable by all wallets to make their, transa their transaction history syncing faster. And another one is a price feed information. So that you, uh, projects that want to get the price of Cardano assets can do it not through any centralized source, but decentralized through um, scanning uh, DEX transactions on chain and uh, figuring from these the, the price of the tokens. So these are two indexers that uh, we want to build and these will be done fully open source so that you don't have to, like in Ethereum, pay millions of dollars to access this data. You'll, any project will be able to access these, um, you know, as long as they're willing to run their own node. So these are the two indexers, but once we get indexers for Cardano, this is not only useful for Cardano, it's also useful for Melkomna, right? So you can imagine some dApp on Melkomna wants to know the price of a token on the Cardano mainnet, right? So this would allow people to run these indexer protocols and then provide this data to the Melkomna uh, deployment, the C1 deployment, and then it would allow these dApps on Melkomna to say like, okay, well, if the price of an asset on Cardano is above a dollar, do this or, or whatever. And so that this kind of indexer protocol uh, that we be able to fetch Cardano state also allows a huge amount of use cases. And so we want to deploy a protocol called the graph, which is an indexer protocol for Ethereum that is open source. We want to redeploy this to Cardano and we have a Calus proposal for this. And we have these other two Cardano proposals for indexers, right? So we'll be able to, we'll be able to with if these three proposals pass, we'll be able to deploy this, this indexer 
to Milkabra and then connect this with, for example, price information. And this will give uh, access to a large amount of information for um, DEXs and, and so on that run on Milkabra. Wow, I had no idea there were so many moving parts to all of this and how interconnected all these things are or, or that you actually needed um, or, or where this data actually came from, like the price feeds and the indexes and all of that. It's a, a, th this has really been enlightening and a bit of a learning experience as well. So it, for that combination of those three proposals, if it gets funded, like would we see this get rolled out in the next like three months or something and be available for the community to actually use? Yeah, that's a great question. So timeline-wise, the DBSync re replacement, so the transaction history indexer, we're actually already working on it. Um, so we're hoping to have that available in maybe a, a month's time. And that will power Flint and will make this open source so that it can be used by other wallets like NAMI or Yodo if they want to speed up their transaction history. The price feed one is what we'll start working on once we're done, the transaction history indexer. So for probably for that one, you're looking at maybe, uh, you know, two, three, four months time. Um, that won't be split into parts because we don't want the price information of just one DEX because then if something happens with the DEX, it kind of ruins the whole thing, right? So we need to do like two or three DEXs and then aggregate the, the data. And so probably you'll see like, you know, one DEX and then another month, of separate DEX and then a third DEX or like two DEXs in NFT marketplace, something like that. So that's the kind of world plan. Um, for the graph, the, the main cost of the graph deployments is not so much the deployment cost, although there's definitely a, an R&D cost to, you know, figuring out how the protocol works and doing the deployment, um, but a larger cost is maintenance, right? Because if we deploy a protocol, we have to, you know, figure out the updates and the whole infrastructure and continuously run the infrastructure for it. Um, so there's a larger kind of ongoing cost. Um, so that's, you know, represents the cost of that proposal. Just a couple of things that you mentioned there. So what one thing would we'll see the trans uh, the the synchronization of wallets being a lot faster. So like at the moment when you open up your Roy or whatever wallet, it's a fairly slow experience. So having yeah. this in there and having that data index faster will mean that uh, the wallet experience will be a lot faster. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah, that's the idea. Okay. And well, so that's if, a big if, tick. If, if, Everyone should uh, like vote yeah. for that one for sure. Yeah, and if you're wondering how people do this right now, so like if, if I'm saying like, oh, we need this for transaction history, you might be wondering how do people do it right now? And just to give you like the one minute summary, there's an existing project called DBSync written by IOG. And this project is written kind of monolithic style. What I mean is that it takes data from all the different things in Cardano and aggregates it on one place. The good thing about having a monolithic style solution is that if you ever need any data, usually it's available. So you can just sync DBSync and then you have access to all the data you need. The problem with the monolithic, monolithic solution is that it contains a bunch of stuff you don't need, right? And the fact that DBSync like amasses all this data, you know, it makes it kind of hard to work with, and it, you know, kind of runs a bit slow, and, and it's kind of hard to work with. Whereas what we're trying to do is instead of providing one one size fits all solution, we're trying to build different components that solve different problems. And then when you're deploying a wallet or a DAP, you kind of mix and match the parts you need together. And so these parts individually, you know, run much, much faster than you would get from a, a one size fits all solution. And then the other one that you said, um, the, the price, uh, the price, getting the price feeds in, would this replace Oracle solutions? No, um, this would be useful if you want to build an Oracle. Right. right? So, gotcha. so, so if you want to build an Oracle that gives you the price of tokens on Cardano, how would you build the Oracle? How do you know the price of Cardano? Well, you need some sort of node that is syncing and fetching the price information, aggregating that and putting on Cardano. And that's what the indexer is for, right? So if you want to build a Cardano Oracle, this indexer would help you do that. Okay. Well, I can uh, definitely see one particular project that is going to find that extremely useful. So I, I suspect they'll be uh, garnering their community to actually vote for this one too. So I'm, I'm pretty uh, excited to hear that. Now, there's probably enough time to look at one more part of the ecosystem that you guys are building out. You guys are doing a lot of work, which is absolutely incredible. But this one here kind of caught my attention. It's the ERC721 and ERC1155 uh, converter. I think yeah. I, I think it's converter. Is that right? Can you talk yeah. about this one? Yeah. So as I, as I mentioned at the start of this video, Milkamra has to be rolled out in parts. 
we can't do the whole thing all at one go. It's just too large of a project. So the first step was just ADA, right? You can wrap, unwrap ADA. Second step, which we released this week was, you know, a limited set of tokens. We can wrap and unwrap these ERC-20 like tokens. And next step is, you know, anybody can submit ERC-20 tokens they want to wrap and unwrap. But then what happens with NFTs, right? NFTs are, are usually called ERC-721 in the Ethereum ecosystem. And then there's another standard called 1155, which is NF, kind of NFT-like in, in, in design, but it's like different, but I'm not, it's kind of too technical to go into this call, but it's, it's kind of a similar idea. Um, and so what do you what do, you do with these tokens? Well, we, we would like to be able to take your NFT from Cardano to Milcom or back, right? And so we need a, a separate solution um, for these separate from the ERC-20 token solution. And so one of the next step is, okay, well, now we have tokens available to everybody. Then we need to make NFTs available to everybody. And that's what this proposal is for. Right, gotcha. So do, do you see um, a lot of people possibly using that? And, and uh, like, I'm trying to visualize a yeah, so, use case other than moving my profile picture over to Mulcom. Yeah, so what, one interesting example of this was that Space Buds, which is an NFT project on Cardano, really see, recently wanted to do an auction for one of their NFTs. Okay. The problem is that there's there is no auction system on the Cardano mainnet that they were partly satisfied with, right? So it's possible to write a, a Plutus auction DAP, but there's already kind of auction DAPs out there on Ethereum that are kind of well-built, well-understood, and you can deploy those on Milcomna. So they said, this is my assumption, obviously, you know, I'm not them and I can't really speak on their behalf, but my assumption is they, they thought, well, okay, well, why don't I just do the auction on Milcomna? And then whoever wins the auction in Milcomna, we send them the NFT, right? Yeah. But the problem is that they had to do this in a centralized way. Yeah. Right? Because the NFT lives on Cardano, the auction happens on Milcomna. So that means that um, Barry, creator of, of this um, NFT project, had to you know close the auction on Milcomna and then manually send them the asset on Cardano. Right? And as long as you trust Barry, you'll know that he, you know, he'll properly send you the NFT once you win. But it'd be nice if you did have to trust him. Yeah. Right. So it would been nice if he could have taken this NFT, wrapped it onto Milcomera, the winner of that auction automatically gets the NFT, and then the person who wins the NFT can then bring it back to Cardano. Right. So this would decrease the amount of trust required for the system. So this is one example of where this kind of ERC721 um, conversion functionality would have come in use. Right, gotcha. And that's a really cool use case as well. And I'm looking forward to like when uh, the wrapped smart contracts come into play as well. So I could yeah. be able to be on the Cardano ecosystem and trigger a dApp that's on Milcometer and have that auction experience and then have it all executed. And I never leave my my safe experience on the Cardano side. So yeah. I'm really looking forward to that kind of future that you guys are building out. Yeah, and we're definitely looking forward to the change to the Cardano that will enable this kind of functionality. So this is, if, if people are listening to this and like, what is what is a wrapped smart contract? Um, you can go to the milkona.com website, read the docs, and we have an explanation for it. Um, but providing this functionality requires some changes to the Cardano protocol that are coming up in the future. Um, so this is part of our long-term roadmap. Very, very exciting. So if people wanted to find out more about Milcometer or if they're even a Ethereum-based developer uh, writing uh, dApps in Solidity, where should they be going to find out more about uh, Milcometer and uh, actually try and engage with you guys? Yeah, so Milcometer has a Twitter account. We have a DC Spark Discord that they can join. Um, we have a mailing list as well on the Milcometer website and a lot of docu uh, documentation on there, both for developers and for users. We try and make it as, as easy as possible to be involved in the community. I would say that um, one thing that I want to make clear is that Milcomna is a separate project from DC Spark. So although from following the DC Spark Twitter account and, and all that, you also get Milcomna related news because we're working on Milcomna. Uh, but DC Spark is not a Milcomna validator. So it's not like DC Spark is making blocks. The validators are other people in the Cardano ecosystem. So DC Spark. Um, works on some of the technologies, um, but if you want, you know, Milcomena specific information, you know, I, I recommend um, following the Milcomena platforms. 
Well, Sebastian, thank you so much for joining me on the podcast and talking about all these things. It's been really enlightening. I've learned a huge amount on this as well, and I'm pretty sure a lot of our listeners and viewers be learning a lot from you too. So thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, anytime. It is going to be a really interesting future with roll-ups and ZK roll-ups and all that tied into the side chain and then having the Cardano blockchain utilize that as well. And we'll see all these dApps integrating and interacting directly from the Cardano side all the way to Mercometer and back again. It'll be one seamless experience that no one will even know or realize that they're using a side chain for some of this computational power and transactions. So I'm really excited to see that future come out within the next few months and uh, to see what will come out of that, what kind of dApps are going to build, be building on that and what other existing dApps might be taking advantage of all this brand new technology available to us. Now, if you're interested in any of those Callus proposals as well, I've put links to all of them down below so you can read up about them and learn a little bit more about what they're trying to achieve and what it actually means for the Cardano ecosystem as well. Now, Catalyst is up for voting very, very soon. We have a two week period from when this video launches to actually go through and vote for all this. So please make sure you go out, check out all the proposals out there. There's a lot of proposals at the moment, but see if there is something there of interest to you and please Please vote for Catalyst. It's a whole, it's a whole step for that future and governance of the Cardano blockchain. Now, if you're interested in learning more about Project Catalyst, I did do an overview course with the Cardax team and they've put it on Teachable, links down below for you so you can find out more about that. It's a free course, just go through, you can watch the videos, read the material and learn all about Project Catalyst. It's a pretty cool thing. All right, that's it for me for this video, but if you really like this content, thumbs up, click subscribe, click the notification bell, does wonders with the YouTube algorithm and you hear more from me soon. Yeah, yeah, gotta do it like that. You've been listening to the Learn Cardano podcast. Gotta get it hype. Crypto is what we like. But this is not investment or financial advice. Gotta do your research, cause it's risky. We know it is. This show is educational and it's informative. Crypto's the future, really, it ain't no debate.